Hello everyone and welcome to episode 2 of Seance with Silent Death. In this series we talk about news on the channel as well as I ask my viewers various questions to get your input on issues that I need your input on. First off, some big news for many people. Coming sometime beginning of this month, July, there will be an update for Door Fortress after more than two years of there not being a patch. A lot of people are looking forward to that. I will probably do a, another season of Door Fortress after I give it time for the mods and utilities to update and any of the more obvious bugs to be fixed. Meanwhile, during the Steam Summer Sale, and I do hope that everyone picked up everything they wanted from the Steam Summer Sale, I know most of the games that I do series on were up, including Space Engineers, Kerbal Space Program, Seven Days to Die, and I'm drawing a blank on the other ones. But there were a number of good sales. I hope everyone got what they wanted. But I picked up Nomoria. It is basically Door Fortress Light. I mean, it's a pretty blatant ripoff, but it's been simplified. And it obviously has the isometric type view thing, so that it looks a little bit better. To kind of whet everyone's appetite for Door Fortress, I'm going to probably be doing a series of this. It's a little bit slow to get started. Though I suppose Door Fortress is a little slow too, but I think this one, Nomoria, is a little bit slower. At least it feels a little bit slower. It might just be the lack of stuff to do right off the bat. Or it could just be my skew perspective. But yeah, I'll be trying to do something like that in the very near future. For Nomoria and various other series that I may add in the future, I would like to know what time you would like them to be uploaded or published. Currently, series run from 5.30 p.m. Central for Space Engineers all the way up to 7 p.m. for Distance Worlds and Total War and probably some other series. So would you like it earlier? for another series or later. I'm not sure which would be best for you. So let me know about that in the comments below, please. One of the games that were not on sale, unfortunately, was Distant Worlds Universe. I've picked up the Distant Worlds Universe version of the Distant Worlds series and have started a season two of that, if you've missed it. I am having a ridiculous amount of fun playing that game. It's quite hard not to record like a dozen episodes ahead before I upload them. Because of that, and because the episodes are even at 1080p, they're anywhere from a half to a third the size of a normal 720p episode. I may increase the frequency of those episodes from every other day to every day. I have not decided yet. It's going to depend a little bit on other series. I may wait until the Total War series ends before I do that because Total War, on the other hand, takes like three times as much. The file size is three times as much as a 720p episode. Ranging from two and a half to three gigabytes, while Distant Worlds is around 500 gigabytes. Not gigabytes, but megabytes. Yeah, that's the word I want. So obviously it takes like 30 something hours to upload a Total War episode. So I'm not quite sure I could do an episode every day just yet, but I plan to in the future at the very least. That is contingent on the fact that 
I'm expecting Nomoria file sizes to be small as well. In the last episode of Seance for Talent Death, I mentioned that I was going to get a new joystick, Thrustmaster T16000 or 1600, one of those. I have, in fact, purchased that, though I haven't had really a chance to play with it. When I was doing the last episode of Space Engineers, the one where the mining break episode, where I had to do so much of mining beforehand to have enough resources, meaning that I did not have the normal amount of episodes to upload. Thus, I was able to use my internet connection a little bit to update War Thunder, as the update is very large. I had not got around to doing that for some time. And this is my first experience playing War Thunder since they've added ground vehicles, as well as the first experience playing since they redid the, I guess, tech tree is what you would call it, the progression. I'm not quite as happy with the progression as the older version, but the tanks part is actually kind of fun. Not particularly popular. I think that might be due to the lack of content right now. But in a lot of ways it's pretty fun, though I'm only I only have a pretty crappy reserve tank at the moment. I haven't played it that much. Only um about an hour or two total. But yeah, it's something that I will still recommend. It's a free game if you don't know, a pay to play. Not not pay to play, but free to play and not pay to win. You can still have a fair amount of fun playing the game without spending any money at all. So if you're into that kind of stuff and you have not tried it before, I would strongly recommend it. To end this episode of Seance with Silent Death, I have a little bit of a rant. First, a little bit of background information. I cook. It's not accurate to say that I like to cook. It's more accurate to say that I'm a very picky eater. And I'm very frugal. So that means I cook to satisfy both those things. And if I'm going to do something, I have the personality that wants me to do it the best way, the best possible. I read up on it and all that stuff. Try to figure out, or try to learn as much about it as I can. That's made me a fairly decent cook. I won't be dethroning any grandmothers or anything, but among my circle of friends, I'm in the upper two or three. Not the first, but I don't have the passion. I still consider cooking a bit of a chore. But the people who do have the passion, of course, had the advantage there and are far better cooks than I'll ever be. However, I do sometimes get the urge to make certain things. And lately, or recently, I got the urge to make some cheese danishes. If you're unaware, danishes are not something that's easy to make. They're very time-consuming. You have to make the dough that's a really sticky, eggy type dough, which is, and then let it sit in the refrigerator and rise for the first rise, which isn't that difficult. That's about how hard cinnamon rolls are to make, if you're not familiar with all this stuff. Then after that comes the hard part. You have to take like a pound of butter. Sprinkle some flour on it and then go after it with a rolling pin like it owes you money or something until it basically reaches the consistency of Play Doh. So that means you got to keep it cold enough to be, um, to keep from being like runny, but warm enough to be valuable. A lot of little finicky stuff in there, which usually, if you're not familiar with the process, ends up switching back and forth to like the freezer, the refrigerator, the counter, beating it, then it's getting too hard, then it's too soft, and then 
it's pretty time consuming. Now after you've done that, you then take your dough, roll it out, and basically fold it over this big slab of butter that you have. And then you go after that again with a rolling pin until it's pretty flat. I think, I forget what the thickness it was supposed to be. Then you basically take this layered dough, it's what's called a laminated dough, and you fold it using a trifold like you would a business envelope letter over and over and over again while rolling it out in between. And that's what gives you the kind of flaky crust that you find on danishes and also on croissants. But croissants don't have as many folds or as many layers. So they're, and they don't have as much sugar in the dough, obviously. So they're easier to make. Slightly easier to make, I should say. Then, after you've done that, you have to shape the dough. Which, depending on how you do it, can be a little bit time consuming and painful. Finally, then you add in the actual cheese filling, which is the easiest part. It's basically just some cream cheese and some other stuff, some cream cheese, some eggs, some vanilla, I think some lemon in some recipes. You just kind of spoon that into it. And then you have to let it rise again, and then of course bake it and all that. So the rant I have is actually the hard part for me. One of the hardest part was finding a freaking recipe to make it. While it's not easy to make, when you Google Danish recipe from scratch, what you get is dozens and dozens of recipes that say Danish is from scratch in the title. But you look at it and it says the ingredients will either be uh, store-bought puff pastry. Or even worse, a can of Pillsbury Crescent Rolls. I mean, come on, people. Do you not know what from scratch means? If you're using store-bought anything, it is not from scratch. I mean, except for, like, eggs and stuff. Very, very annoying. I eventually did find a recipe. I think it was on Joe Pastry or something. Or Joe's Pastry, one of those. Which I made using a shaped rolls out in his, um, he called it classic sweet roll method, where you basically roll, after you've done the layers, you roll the dough out and put some buttercream frosting between on half of it and then fold it over onto itself and then roll it out again, which did not work quite as well. I should have stuck with the classic pinwheel method, but. It still worked well enough. And now I have three cookie sheets. Yeah, three cookie sheets full of danishes to enjoy. Though learning how to cook does have its downsides. When I first started college, I would be basically using a lot of, or living a lot of, not living, but eating a lot of things like hamburger helper and the like 99 cent frozen pizza but now if I try to make hamburger helper it makes me gag so uh, it's, uh, I suppose there's probably a recipe that I could look to for like homemade hamburger helper that wouldn't be so bad but if you are looking to cook or to learn how to cook maybe you're like me and you're starting or you are like me you're like I was that's the word I'm looking for and you're starting college or you're just moving out of the dorm, so you're going to be living somewhere where you actually have a kitchen. Some sites I could recommend is supercook.com. It is a site where you can put in whatever ingredients you have. And then it will list all the recipes from various sites, which is a good way to find new recipes to try. It's also a good way to be a bit thrifty. Another site is, oh, I don't know the name of it right off the top of my head, but there's Simply Recipes and there's All Recipes, and I can't remember which is which. One of them is a large site that has a lot of recipes that you can, basically, if you know what you want to make, search the site and you can 
there's comments like a YouTube video there's comments so you can read the comments and there's also ratings on the recipes so if you know something if you know what you want to make like Google it or search use their search to find it then read the comments because they always have like don't do this add like more of this or maybe add some of this spice into it and be a whole lot better and that gives you something that's pretty good it's like how I make recipes that are from my childhood because if I call up my mother and ask her how to make it her ingredients say add enough until it looks right which is just useless because I have no idea how it's supposed to look so I have to resort to using website recipes and then kind of tweak those to get what I remember from my childhood. The other site, which I think is a Simply Recipes one, contains recipes by one person, but they're all high quality recipes, I should say. A lot of comfort food, like there's a really good recipe for chicken pot pie on the website. Um, there's also more fancy re recipes like risotto, but that's for uh, if you're a little bit more advanced or if you just want something that's pretty specific. They have a lot, they have a pretty wide range of recipes there, but all the recipes that I've tried from that site have been really good. So those are the three sites that I recommend. If you're completely hopeless, like you can't even boil water, I have a Better Homes and Gardens, like a really old old cookbook from them, copyright 1981, that has extremely basic recipes all the way down to like how to scramble eggs. So maybe looking for that on eBay or something, or even better yet, you could probably find a like cooking series on YouTube for like beginner cooks. But that's only for the like completely clueless. Most people, I would think, would have at least a basic grasp of cooking, though my sister is not among those people. She's the one that I might should give this cookbook to. But I suppose she has learned a little bit since she's been married. I hope. They haven't starved to death anyway. I've been food poisoned, suffered from food poisoning. But yeah, I think that's going to be enough rambling for this episode. Like if you like. Subscribe if you're not. And as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.